So I hope you noticed I have We The People here on my tie. I've got We The People socks. So what's up? Three little words. What's behind them? From today's perspective, we look back and we say, what do you mean, we the people? They didn't let women vote. They didn't let slaves vote. There were property qualifications and literacy tests. We see all the exclusions. But even then, we should remind ourselves about the progress we've made since then. In a document, a constitution, that actually did exclude folks, but then there were amendments, a making of amends, so that people who weren't allowed to vote earlier are allowed to vote at later periods of constitutional history. So all that's the one really interesting thing to think about historically, how we've moved from 1787 to today, how we the people have grown over time, expanded, become more inclusive as America has become more inclusive. And as the United States has become more inclusive, so has that phrase. So that's one way of thinking about the thing historically, but the other way to think about it is to remember that in 1787, for all the exclusions, still more people were allowed to vote on the Constitution in this we the people do ordain and establish process. More people were allowed to vote than had ever been allowed to vote on anything else in the history of planet Earth. And the world would never be the same. There were very few democracies that had ever existed in the world and none of those democracies before the American Revolution had ever been put to a vote. This is the big bang of human history, the hinge of human history. And here's something really special about the American Constitutional Project. It grows up in America alongside a newspaper culture, a discourse culture. The Constitution is short. Why is it short? so that it can be published in full in newspapers. And it was. America is a highly literate society at the time the Constitution is adopted. And the Constitution is written for a society that reads newspapers and debates things in newspapers. American democracy is not today and never has been just about voting. It's also about speaking, about hearing, about debate. You can't really discharge your responsibilities as a citizen to vote every four years unless you're actually doing your homework, knowing who the candidates are, what they stand for, what the issues are, what different people actually think about the issues of our day. And you can't do any of that without freedom of speech and freedom of the press, without these basic conversational infrastructural elements that undergird democracy and voting. So it's not just about the words in the Constitution, it's about our conversations about the Constitution. But the only way it survives is if it's replenished each generation, because each new generation has to come along and keep the project going, and the only way they can do that is by knowing their history. So this is important, and that's what the New York Historical Society is all about.